All right, let's work on more skin tones and likenesses. Uh, today I want to show you how to paint tiny faces in your acrylic portrait. Tiny faces. Uh, this is a 24 by 30 acrylic portrait I'm working on. Uh, it's a commission portrait and it's got 30 people in it. <laughs> 30 people. Uh, full length portrait. It's, it's crazy. But uh, hey, it was a commission portrait and the ladies paying me for it and I enjoy doing commission portraits, so why not? But I want to teach you uh, how you can paint tiny faces. I mean, look at how little these faces are uh, compared to my hand. I would say uh, they're maybe about one inch wide. Um, so very, very small, small faces here. And I want to show you how you can do this convincingly in your portrait. What kind of brushes do you use? What kind of acrylic paint do you use? How do you apply it? What kind of skin tones, uh, you know, different colors do you mix together to get the skin tones you need? How do you do shading? All of those things. I want to answer uh, these questions today and more in this video. Uh, you'll have to listen though because I'm going to be just painting and as you watch me paint we'll be basically answering all those questions one way or another. Uh, during this tutorial for you. But hey, before I get started, I'd like to uh, give you a free gift just to say thank you for watching this video. Um, if you're struggling with muddy skin tones in your acrylic portrait, chalkiness, blotchiness, uh, I have a free downloadable PDF guide and you can download that, you can set it up next to your easel, your canvas, and it's going to give you practices on how to mix color, how to overcome blotchiness, muddiness in your acrylic portrait, in your skin tones. It's called Fix Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait. You can get that free PDF guide, download it, and it's at realisticacrylic.com forward slash fix dash muddy dash skin tones. It's in the top comment here in this video, also in the description. So go ahead, download that, set it up next to your canvas, it's going to help you out a lot, and it's completely free. So I just wanted to mention that to you. All right, let's get started here. Um, I'm going to set up my Kindle right next to this painting. Now, I apologize for the creaky chair. I've got a very comfortable director-style chair, but it does creak a lot, so <laughs> I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, I want to show you some things here. This is a hardboard panel, it's not canvas. That's probably the first tip I could give you uh, for painting small faces is use a hardboard panel. Canvas just has way too much texture and you're gonna find that uh, it's gonna be a, a lot easier if you use a hardboard panel. So that's tip number one. Um, now the next tip would be to use a small brush. Uh, I use a, a size zero, it's a one-op brush and it works very, very well. Now let's just dive in here. I'm going to show you a little bit more of what's going on. and We'll, we'll do some work. I'll, I'll show you the process as well. Uh, so use a one-op brush, um, a round brush, and get it to a nice tip when you're painting. So that's, that's tip number two. Use the right kind of brush. Synthetic bristle, one-op brush, not a 10 knot. There's not enough bristles on there. You need something that will hold a little bit of paint. And then when you're, you're doing your, your painting, you want to dip it into your, your paint and get it to a nice point and twist it, twist it around. Okay, so the technique is important. That's tip number two. Tip number three is make sure your paint is fluid. I mean, that is one of the most challenging things ever. Uh, just, you know, using too thick of paint, and I see that with artists many times, you know, they take the paint right out of the tube, however it is, and, um, you know, sometimes it has that really thick, buttery consistency. It's, you know, heavy body acrylic. Don't do that. If you're trying to paint little faces and you're using thick paint, you're going to frustrate yourself. Um, instead, make sure your paint is fluid. And the way to do that is to get yourself a spray mister. Now, this is a Flarisol spray mister. Uh, you can get these at Amazon, but any spray bottle that can just spray a nice fine mist of water works well. And what you do is you just simply spray your palette. Spray your palette. Alright, you spray it every 15 minutes. 
and then you use matte medium, and this is a nice Liquitex, well actually I use Nova Color, Liquit Liquitex fluid matte medium, that's what you want to use, and you mix your paints into that fluid medium. Not only does it give you, um, you know, a smoother consistency, it also adds richness and depth to your paintings because your paint becomes more translucent and you can develop many layers. Um, I do that with the acrylic glazing technique, which is how I primarily paint my portraits. Um, but like I said, it does make your paint very fluid when you spray your paint and mix it with some matte medium. All right, so that's tip number three. Now, tip number four for painting these small faces is don't over detail. Don't over detail your faces, all right? So this is a face right here I was working on, this, this young lady, and she's a little further along than some of the other ones. Some you can see have less layers on them. They're not as realistic. She's a little more realistic. Um, but I didn't do too much detail. There really isn't a lot of detail on her face. Now what I do have is correct values. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect and it's not finished, but I have correct values in the correct places. I've got the dark values in for her eyes. And you can see that here uh, in the reference photo. I'll just kind of set this up next to it. Here's her face. And you know, uh, her eyes are kind of inset in her head pretty deeply, so there's some dark shadows there, um, you know, for her pupils. And I got the, the white of the eyes is not white, it's gray. So we have the right values in the right place, um, and, you know, we have the right colors, basically, these skin tones. And you want to, you know, make the cheeks a little pinker. Um, you want to, you know, define the edges, not using line, but using value. But I don't have every strand of hair. I don't have every eyelash painted. In fact, I don't even have really any lines for her teeth. Maybe just a faint suggestion. But if you were to paint in every little line for her teeth, you would detract from the realism, not increase it. So don't over detail. That's tip number four for uh, painting small faces. Okay. And then I would say uh, tip number five for, for painting small faces is to really have enough layers and and to use a little bit of titanium white. Some people use a zinc white, but use a little bit of titanium white or, or something uh, to get those smoothing layers in there. Otherwise, you're gonna have, it's kind of choppy brushwork. Um, and especially if you're doing the glazing technique, uh, the brush, the bristle lines can get pretty um, pretty choppy looking, but you can actually use a small round brush like this and really place those layers in just the right space, but you want to make sure you're mixing a little bit of titanium white in with your paint. But when you do that, let me just zoom out, this is getting a little hard for you to see it. When you, when you do that, when you mix this titanium white, you got to make sure that you're adding the appropriate warmer colors like Indian yellow, uh, pyro orange, those warmer colors to compensate for the coolness of that titanium white. Unless the people have really pale skin tones, then you might not have to add those in. Um, so let's actually show you a couple of things. You can see this woman's face. We'll just zoom right back into it. I'm sorry, I'm a one-man operation here. I don't have a film crew. <laughs> but I want to show you uh, this woman's face here next to hers. So you can see how hers is more done. Hers is more simple. I just have the basic forms in there. Let's go ahead and add some more nuances and I'll show you how this would work. So remember the tip I gave you about getting your paint on your brush to a point and really getting it nice and fine. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to twist the paint Make sure we look at the brush and that it's at a nice point. Kind of scoop it up. You do want to make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush. That's another good tip for you, a bonus tip. Uh, because if you don't have enough paint on your brush, it, it's just really frustrating. You can always take paint off of your canvas or your panel. Um, but if you have too little, it's just frustrating. So I'm adding some shading to her face. I'm going to move this uh, Kindle over 
the closer you have your Kindle or your reference next to what you're painting, the better it's going to be. All right. So, um, now we're going to add a little bit of shading right above her forehead. And I'm, I'm looking at these specific patterns of value. I want to get these values in the right place. Okay, and that, that's even one more bonus tip. So I think we're up to seven tips now for you. <laughs> seven tips for painting small faces. Um, get those values in the right place. Uh, really look at your reference photo and see the actual space that the particular shape occupies. You gotta study the reference photo and see what's lighter and what's darker. Notice the lighting scenario and try to replicate that. Now in this case, the light is from above, it's up there outside, so the nose is catching the light, the forehead's catching the light, but the chin and the cheeks are a little darker. So if I can make her forehead lighter than her chin and her cheeks, that's going to go a long way in really increasing the level of realism and the level of believability, and even her likeness. So we have this titanium white and pyro orange and you know a little bit of uh, uh, Indian yellow and we're going to just dilute it with some matte medium so that makes it more transparent, more translucent. And we're going to then paint that on her chin. With that we're going to darken the overall value of her chin, the area above her lip. Um, and then her neck, darken that a little bit as well. And then with that, by contrast, it's going to make her forehead lighter. So currently her forehead is, is white. I mean, it's just basically, it's nearly white. It's just the white that I used um, as the ground, you know, when I put the gesso and primer on this hardboard. Uh, but now that I'm darkening that lower area, well, that's, that's really helping now. That's going to give this area more contrast. Now, the skin tones aren't going to look accurate, though, until I get the dark values dialed in. So we need to get those dark values as dark as they should be. I may not be able to do it in this video, but I want to push it further along. Uh, if you can see this on my palette, I'm going to go to this darker part of the mix. And I've got some alizarin crimson raw or dark in here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of darken her nose a little bit. And yes, we can see her nostrils, but I don't want to overdo it. Just want to just kind of um, darken the entire nose and the nostrils a little bit. And then those little crevices on either side of the mouth. I want to do that. And I want to also uh, darken this area here. Yes, I want to darken this little shadow area um, under her chin. And here I'm going to be using this uh, kind of a medium mid-tone. So that's got more of a raw or dark pyro orange raw sienna in it. And we just kind of darken this whole area under her chin. Right, and then we also want to darken her hair, and that color should have a little less pink in it. So to do that, we can just add some raw umber dark right here. A touch of Indian yellow, and then a little titanium white just to cool it down. That should give us a pretty nice color for her hair that hopefully will be less uh, skin tony. Less <laughs> It'll have a little less uh, yellow, or a little less pink in it. So we just want to make it more yellowish, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Indian yellow, a little more raw or dark. Yeah, it's getting it more to the greenish side. You'll find blonde hair actually tends to look almost slightly greenish brown in certain instances. It's probably picking up some of the color outside here as well, so that's something to keep in mind too. So if we can get uh, these areas darker, and then this will really make it pop. Let's just take some raw or dark and ultramarine blue right here. And uh, let's uh, make a nice dark value that we can pop in right under her ears and close to her neck. Because that's where we don't have a lot of light. 
um, reaching the other areas. And we, you know, add some more raw umber dark here. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna blend out of this. And see when we do that, then it's gonna really give us a great, great sense of uh, realism here because we have the dark values where they should be. Now we can also darken um, the eyeglasses. Let's just put in a couple of these darker areas for the bow of the glasses. A couple of darker values for the hair. And that helps it to come along. Now we're not quite there yet. I mean we do need to also add a darker value to the bottom of her cheek. We don't want to we don't want it to get too dark. That that color I put down was probably just a bit too dark. We want to progressively darken it without getting too dark. We put that value in. Try not to be impatient, just develop that one little bit at a time. Then we can come in and do a little bit more uh, shading around her eyes and just really darken that whole area right around her eyes just to show you know that the glasses frame is casting a shadow there and, uh, and then lastly we'll switch to this other color where we've got a little more of this kind of greenish brown and we'll uh, kind of redefine that shape of her hair get that parted area a little closer to what it should be now lastly make sure you put in a little shadow under the hair to blend it into the skin tones on the forehead uh, many artists miss that, but if you can do that, it'll go a long way in promoting the realism. Uh, there's more I can do on this, but I wanted to show you that bit of just uh, taking it further along. Uh, so we can zoom out a little bit. You can see how they look together, and uh, little by little, it's coming together. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Don't forget my free PDF guide on how to fix muddy skin tones, and I'll be happy to send that to you. This is how the painting looks right now as we stand. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. God bless, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.